Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. There's a lot of confusion out there right now. Arizona is adopting the new rules from the National Association of Realtors earlier than the rest of the country. The requirement for, for the rule changes was August 17th. We came in and rolled it out August 1st. So we're feeling the pain more than anybody else. And when I say pain, it's the confusion that's causing the pain. The confusion over which form to use and when and when is it required, when is it not. And, and agents that don't realize that they should have taken the time to really dive in and understand these forms by meeting with their brokers, attending the webinars, going to the classes. Because your clients, potential buyers out there and sellers, they're lost. They don't know what's going on. Uh, buyers especially. I mean, who's, who's well versed in this stuff? As a buyer, you're thinking about buying a home. Do you really even know that the rules changed a couple weeks ago, last week? No. And we're fielding phone calls going, I, I went, I called an agent. I wanted to see a house. He said I had to lock into a contract with them, an agreement to go look. How do I get out of it? What's going on here? Because now the National Association of Realtors and our local MLS says, well, you have to have a signed agreement before you can take a buyer out to see a home. And I'm going to show you what that form looks like here. There's, there's four forms out there. Everyone is, they have an acronym. Like this is Buyer Broker Agreement. It's called a BBA. We've got more acronyms now than the military in real estate. It's really getting annoying. And, and, uh, and they're written well. Um, so I, I can't complain about it. They've done an excellent job of designing these agreements. And here's one here I'm just going to share with you. And it's called the Buyer Broker Agreement to Show Property. And there's a couple of key things here I want you to concentrate on. When that agent slaps this in front of you and says, you have to sign this in order for me to show you the house, understand what you're signing, okay? Now, there's another, this is an agreement to show property. There's another agreement called agency that I'm not going to get into now. That's after you enter into a contract to buy a home. Uh, we can dive into that later. But this one it's, you know, it's got your name and the broker's name, the agent, you know, so for me, it would be, you know, buyer here, Sally Smith, broker, Rick McCone. I'm not a broker, but they always have you put the, oh, the firm name would go up here, Gabby Homes and Investments, LLC, and then my name, the agent's name. Here's the deal right here, the term. This agreement shall commence on blah, blah, blah date and expire at 1159 on boom, boom, boom date. Okay. This agreement just said, you can set that for one day if you want or a weekend. You want an agent to show you some homes, say, I'll sign an agreement for a weekend. I'm not gonna commit to you yet. It's like bringing an engagement ring to your first date. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, so broker compensation is not set by law nor by any board association of realtors, multiple listing service in any manner that is fully negotiable. In other words, the fee is negotiable, always has been. The lawsuit pretended that we had collusion. I'm going to go over that in a moment. Collusion, because they said nationally rates were averaging between 2.5 and 3%. That's market driven. There were also people that were only charging $1,200. Flat fee to list your home, $2,900. Just all across the board. I just think the NAR had really bad defense attorneys and they lost the case because they were arrogant. And hopefully they won't come after me for saying that. But this form has broker compensation. And it says... If broker represents a buyer in the purchase of a property as indicated on the purchase contract that was signed prior to the expiration date, buyer agrees to compensate the broker as following in the compensation, either a percent or a dollar amount and uh, um, flat fee. It's up to you. Now, if you don't want to pay it, there are forms out there where we can ask the seller to contribute to a, a buyer broker's amount of compensation. We're not even allowed to use the word commission anymore, so they're calling it bananas. And it is bananas. It's just nutty out there. And for those of you in other markets where this is coming on April or August 17th, start learning your state's forms now. California's having a problem because they put together these forms and the NAR said, it wasn't NAR, it was the Department of Justice, says your form's too complicated, it's too long. California does that. They make everything just too doggone complicated. 
And so they said, you got to simplify this. So they're going through it. I think Colorado is having a lawsuit. I think they said, no, we're not going to comply. Uh, we're, we're just we're just not going to do this. It all boiled down to they just wanted the commissions that were being offered to the buyer brokering to no longer appear in the MLS. We don't want anybody to see that. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But that's what they did. But they said, but you can put it on your own website if you want. What? You aren't going to look at the house, find it on the MLS, and then go cruising. And then you got to figure out, okay, what's Rick's website? No, it's rickhelps.com. Let me go in and see. Well, I can't really put it on my website because my website is a direct feed to the multiple listing service. So if I can't put buyer broker commission on the MLS, it's not going to show up on my website unless I make a landing page on a specific listing. So agents aren't going to go from site to site to site. Now you've got agents that want to put a sign on their sign rider outside. Well, how many people really drive by your house versus look at the house on the multiple listing service? So confusion is rampant. We've got people that have called and said, you know, I'm, I'm locked into an agreement. I don't get it. He made me sign it. I went to an open house, they said, and the agent said I couldn't look at the house without an agreement. That's not true, my friends. You can look at an open house. There's even wording out there that says this does not apply to open houses. Sellers, you can still offer a buyer broker compensation, just like you have in the past 40 years. You can still offer that. It's just how we communicate it has changed. And because of all these forms that we've come up with, we've just made the whole thing a big royal mess as people are trying to learn what to do? When do I use this form? When do I use that other form? So it is, uh, like I say, a royal mess out there. And uh, we've got buyer agreements, exclusive right to sell, um, buyer broker agreements to show, uh, agency agreements, you know, 10 different acronyms, acronyms that are out there. But if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick or rickhelps.com, at rickhelps.com, or if you want to do a video call to go over some of these changes, I'd be happy to walk you through it. Bottom line is, you know, unfortunately, buyer beware. Um, agents have a fiduciary duty to show you that house, whether there's compensation or not. If you want to see that house, the agent has a fiduciary duty to show it to you and ask for compensation. Now, if there isn't any compensation being offered and you as a buyer don't want to pony up, it's a totally different conversation that you can enter into to figure out how you're going to do this. Um, in most cases we're seeing right now, the offer of compensation from sellers has remained relatively the same, although there is a much larger percentage offering nothing. But on the back side, they're saying, well, we're going to offer nothing, but we're willing to talk about it. So I'm not sure if they've accomplished anything with this logistical mess. So good luck to you out there if you're buying or selling. And I know everybody's nervous about the election, but uh, we're all just spinning right now going, man, what a mess. I hope it gets better. If you have any questions, again, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.